On the 9th of October, 2001, Miss Mary passed away. My mother taught school in the Mount Vernon, Texas Independent School District for more years than I care to remember. Many of you remember her as Mary Duncan. Many of you know her as Mrs. Frank Scott. Either way, Mother lived in the Mount Pleasant and Mount Vernon areas in northeast Texas, off and on, since 1918. Many of you had contact with her through our peach orchard in Cookville, Texas. She was a no-nonsense type of person and an astute businesswoman. She was loved by her friends and feared by her enemies. Like many people raised in the Depression, she watched her money carefully. Yet for the past few years, she often complained to me of being short of money. She always kept me apprised of her finances and where her money was invested. I knew her income, and I thought I knew her outlay. I was confused as to how she could be short of money. Every time I asked her, she refused to tell me what she was doing with her money. During the past few years, I had noticed my mother had a mentation problem. The change was so slow that those who lived with her and around her did not see it. However, because I saw her approximately every 12 to 18 months, I noticed abrupt changes. Three events contributed to this. In the spring of 1986, my mother fell and hit her head on a concrete porch. She was taken to a local hospital and x-rayed. No major problems were immediately observable, so she was sent home with instructions to take an aspirin. After she died, the autopsy showed that she had a brain hemorrhage for a number of years. Small, slow, insidious this was, but a missed brain hemorrhage nonetheless. Again in 1991, she fell and hit her head. Again, she was taken to the local hospital, and again, a small, slow, internal brain hemorrhage was missed. The last few years of my grandfather's life were particularly difficult for my mother. Saul Purcell was a cantankerous old man, and he was particularly hard on my mother. He was not pleased with anything my mother did. She did everything she could to please and appease him to no avail. This put unbearable stress on my mother, yet she t chose to tell me about it not at all. These three things, I think, were some of the factors that set my mother up for the con artist I am about to describe to you. One of the jobs the executor does after a death is to straighten out the finances of the decedent. This task fell to me after my mother died. As I went through her papers, I began to find receipts for postal money orders. In the last eight years of her life, my mother spent just over $328,000 cash on various con games. Sad as it is, it is not unusual. At this time, locally and throughout the nation, a number of elderly people are willingly sending their life savings to a stranger who has told them to do it on the phone. This wonderful new friend that they have also has told them not to tell any member of their family or anyone else about it. Most of the calm games revolve around lotteries. The initial phone call tells the person they have won a lottery usually an amount around $40,000. All they have to do to claim this money is to send in the initial income tax payment. Within the last few years, the IRS has started requiring movements of money more than $5,000 to be reported. Prior to that, any amount up to 10000 could be moved without being reported. Now the gamers have to request numerous checks slightly less than 5000 each. These checks must be certified or cashier's checks. If you are reading this and someone has told you to send them money to pay income tax on money or any item or any shipping charges on anything you have won, be aware the person you are talking to is a crook. He is a member of organized crime and he is robbing you blind with your help. These gamers are the most sincere, loving, caring people you ever listen to, expect to listen to on the phone, and they will convince you that their game is honest. They already know your name, address, social security number, your bank account to the penny. They know every investment, every CD, your property, and if anyone else has control of your money. They know every way of getting your money. They want all of your money, and they do not care if you are left with one penny. 
In fact, they prefer you to be several hundred thousand dollars in debt if it helps you to send them more money. If you have sent people, if you have sent money to these people, you are on a list. It is known as a responders list. It means you are gullible enough to send money to a stranger. This list is circulated to all the various con games and you are subtly drained of all your cash. Most of you will not tell anyone what has happened to you because you're ashamed that after a lifetime of work and accumulation, all someone had to do was to tell you to send your money to them and you did it. The second part of the con game now begins. You are contacted by someone claiming to be able to recover your money for a fee. All this person wants you to do is send in the finder's fee. They will be able to start work with this money and will return you 75% of what you lost. You never see any money except what you send to them. The bottom line is this. If you win the lottery, you win the lottery. The Internal Revenue Service takes their money up front. You do not have to send in a dime. The IRS will get their money from the winnings. You do not have to send in a lawyer's fee. You do not have to send in a finder's fee. If you have won the lottery, you have won the lottery. All the money is yours except what the IRS takes up front. Anyone else telling you anything else is a crook. Please, if anyone has approached you by phone and attempted to get you to send them money, tell someone. Preferably the United States Treasury Department, the FBI, your local peace, your, blanker, your banker, your lawyer, your family, or anyone else that they tell you not to contact. Your peace, I said, was your local police. Another disheartening thing about Mother was the prodigious amount of money she spent on magazines. There were literally truckloads of magazines stacked waist deep in three rooms of her house. Every month there were two or three issues of the same magazines coming to the house. She bought these magazines because she thought buying them would help her to win the various lotteries they sponsored. I saw one bill of hers to Publishers Clearinghouse in excess of $3,500. There are also prodigious amounts of money sent to Reader's Digest, American Family Publishers, the Animal Hughes Bain Society, and other legitimate, open parentheses, you don't have to really buy anything to win, but if you don't buy, we'll take you off our mailing list, and then you won't have a chance to win. Hurry, hurry, close parentheses, businesses. There was also a great amount of money sent to the Spanish lottery and the German lottery and many other get-rich-quick schemes. I think she would have been happy to have won $200. Yet on these various schemes, she spent $328,580, all of which she hid from her family because she was told to keep everything secret. A lot of this was done, I think, because she needed to feel busy. It is a difficult thing to feel idle, to have nothing to do. These con artists know this, and they use it to prey on the elderly. Think carefully before you send any money to anything. There are families around you that you could bless with the money you're wasting. Remember, if anyone tells you to keep anything secret, they're looking for a way to cheat you. If you comply with them, they have found it. Those of you with older family members need to be aware of what they're doing. Check to see if they're receiving large numbers of magazines. Find out what they're doing even if it means invading their privacy. Although their money is theirs to spend as they see fit, Find out if a crook is taking their life savings. Find out if something is some making them do something in a secret manner. Large financial transactions are private, yes, but they need not be secretive. If you are sending money to one of these crooks, stop. Tell someone in your family. If they have conned you into an automatic draw, change accounts, cancel the credit card, notify the authorities. You are literally throwing money away. This is not the heritage you want to leave to your family. Do not be too embarrassed to stop. Do not worry about how angry your family will be at you. The most important thing is to not let them take anything else from you, especially your dignity.